All right, so once I was happy with the rough thumbnail idea, I jumped into Character Creator 4 to get a faster blockout of the character. I just used one of the default avatars here, uh, changed it into a quick pose based on one of the thumbnails I had, and from the Morph tab, I just went ahead and click and drag certain things on the body uh, just to change the proportions to something more interesting and, and more stylized. Now, using the Go See button from inside CC4, I sent the base mesh to ZBrush in a relaxed A pose with a single click. Keep in mind that this is not going to be the base mesh at all, it's just a simple blockout to, uh, to get me started with ZBrush. You could do the same thing directly within ZBrush, but I just thought um, I'd give you a, a glimpse into what Character Creator can do and how easy it is to connect it with ZBrush. In fact, the focus of this short tutorial series is to show you that you can use any base mesh with any topology that you want with Character Creator 4 and ZBrush, but we'll get to that later in another video. We're still designing things at the moment. In ZBrush, I started by adjusting some little things like removing a finger because my creature um, only has three fingers and a thumb on each hand. And I probably won't need the feet either because uh, I want my creature to, to wear some boots or some suit so I can close the gaps of the toes. I will also separate the head from the body so that I can add more resolution to just the head. And in this case, I will also separate the hands and the feet from below the knee so that they are also a separate mesh and you know I can work on the body a bit more comfortably. The rest is all about adjusting the proportions and size of the body. I use DynaMesh so I can play around with, you know, the volumes a little bit faster without worrying too much on the topology. Uh, the Move, Inflate and Smooth brushes are essentially the basic tools that I'm using at this point. But after getting a nice read of the overall body, I started to add other pieces to refine the primary shapes. For example, the cylinder and the torus around the neck, they start as clean primitive shapes that I went ahead and deformed, cut up and remeshed to, um, to achieve what I wanted. On the other hand, with the boots, I used the base mesh that I already had, but I dynameshed it all together to be able to sculpt the forms without any topology restriction. Using the clay brushes, I did some subtle adjustment to the volumes before you know, smoothing everything out and keeping things clean. I also duplicated a portion of the foot just to create the sole of the boot and flatten this shape using the flatten deformer. And the idea here is just to make sure that it was aligned properly to the ground just with a flat surface. Once I had the block out of the main shapes for this sketch ready in 3D, I started to refine the base mesh a bit more. For instance, with the boot, I used a custom brush from one of my packs to cut in some lines that could be panels. And you can use something like the damn standard brush that comes with ZBrush uh, to achieve a similar effect. I also use masking tools like the pen and the lasso uh, just to mask areas of the boot and scale them up, inflate them a little bit, move them around just to, to add a bit of variation to the silhouette. Now moving forward to work a little bit on the hand, I dynamesh the base mesh that I had and I use the inflate and the smooth brushes to close that gap where that original pinky finger was. The sculpting process here is more of the same, clay brushes, a bit of, uh, you know, move and smooth brushes just to keep things clean, but that's about it. We'll wait until the next stage to refine and polish this base mesh. For the head that I had already dynameshed, I used the move brush and other sculpting brushes to, to tweak it a little bit and kind of like turn the design into a more of a scenting creature, not just a, a random brute creature. And this part to me is very much the same as the thumbnailing stage in 2D, but doing it in 3D. Using Dynamesh in ZBrush allows me to continue the refinement process and to be honest, just explore the design a little bit further and not to worry about you know, any topology restrictions or anything like that. I added a couple of spheres that I can place as reference for the eyes of the creature so that I can also sculpt and, and refine the volumes around these important landmarks uh, of the face just using things like the clay brush, the move brush, and of course, uh, the smooth brush every now and again just to keep things clean. Then I can add a bit more resolution with Dynamesh, redefine some of the cuts and wrinkles using custom brushes or, you know, like I said, the equivalent to the dam standard brush. But once you get into the rhythm, this is more of the same, right? It's just rinse and repeat. The body or the suit was a bit plain up to this point. So using my cutter brush, I outlined some paneling or some potential panels for the suit base, roughly on the initial thumbnail that I had. Uh, nothing too precise here. These are simple reference points or, or lines, I should say, to refine the sculpt a little bit later. Another really helpful thing that I like to do for this uh, 3D sketching stage 
is to polypaint the objects earlier on in the process. I like to add some colors to give me an idea of the palette that I can use. And this also can give me an idea of how I can leverage the contrast in the hues and the brightness of the colors just to add some further design details with just texture. Finally, I went ahead and created some polygroups and I created those polygroups based on the lines that I marked around the body. So essentially defining the different sections of what could make that bodysuit. And obviously there are different ways to create polygroups. I just like the simplicity of the one that I'm gonna show you, which is essentially taking the masking tools, mask an area that you want to create a polygroup from, and then hit Control and W. So this shortcut will assign a polygroup to the mask area. Anyway, at the end of the sketching process, I have my block out ready and I have some polygroups that I can use to easily refine my panels based on the polypane ideas.